Sea turtles have flourished for millions of years, and it is really only until recent times that their numbers have started to crash. And unfortunately, the majority of the reasons behind that population crash uh, can be attributed to human factors. Because we are behind those reasons for the population crash, we can change that. We can turn that around and actually bring sea turtle populations back to where they once were. On a bald head island beach, what looks like an eerie scene to a passerby is actually a group of scientists and visitors keeping a nighttime vigil for nesting female turtles. Loggerheads are a threatened species in the U.S. Their numbers have declined severely due to marine pollution and certain types of commercial fishing. Coastal development has also reduced their nesting sites, a fact that compelled island residents to form the Bald Head Island Conservancy in 1983 and become advocates for these fascinating creatures. They manage to hatch off of a beach two inches long and 30 years later they come back to that same area to lay their nest. How do they know to do that? Instinct, yeah, very good, exactly. They rely on instinct really, really heavily. This is the shell of an adult loggerhead. This is probably about the size, maybe smaller, of the female that we would see tonight. But I make no promises. The turtles have minds of their own and I cannot control it. Each night during turtle season, the class group is eager to get out to the beach, often braving untold numbers of bugs and mosquitoes, hoping to see a nesting female. Here we are, waiting for a turtle. The females can swim hundreds or even thousands of miles to reach their nesting sites, laying their eggs at night when predators are fewer they wait offshore until the time is right. Good luck, be safe. Our sea turtle patrol, which consists of six undergraduate college interns, they actually drive the beach all night long from 9 p.m. until 6 in the morning. We want a turtle! And they're in search of every single nesting female. Throughout each night, the turtle patrol checks nighttime beach walkers to make sure they have red filters on their flashlights. Red light is used because turtles don't see much in the red spectrum. Bright lights could disorient them and interfere with the essential purpose of their visit. The patrol also keeps an eye out for any obstacle that might hinder a turtle making her way up from the surf. It's a very exhausting, draining job, especially on seasons like this when they're not getting turtles every night. There's something right about this night. It's time. The patrol crew has found a female laying her eggs, high enough on the dune ridge to be out of reach of all but storm-driven tides. Using her back flippers, she digs a nest cavity about 18 inches deep and deposits 100 to 120 eggs. Our goal is to what we call saturation tagging, so it's to intercept every single female, tag her, measure her, and this way we have a record and so we get ideas of longevity and survival rates and things of that nature. Now she goes through this extensive covering process, so she fills the rest of the hole back in. It can take up to a couple of hours. And then she just goes through the motions of literally flipping sand in every which way direction, doing her best to really disguise the whole area, just trying to make it as difficult as possible for predators and other things to find those eggs. Sea turtles in water are graceful and agile. They can reach speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. But on land, turtles seem slow and awkward. Once the eggs are covered to her satisfaction, she makes her deliberate way back to the ocean. As soon as her flippers bite into the surf, she disappears with just a few strokes. Unbelievable, like she was never here. To deter would-be predators like foxes, wire cages are installed around the nest, 
more vulnerable nests are relocated entirely. Throughout the summer, turtle watches and classes about the turtles continue. Their goal is to reach the Sargasso Sea. Along about August, the nighttime patrols shift toward watching for nests to hatch. Um, does this one look like it's gonna hatch? Um, no. Well, this year we had 36 loggerhead turtle nests on Baltic Island, which is a relatively low number for us. The nests were hatching very successfully until recently Hurricane Bill passed well offshore, but created enough of a storm surge and many of the nests were washed away or inundated with water. But all were not lost. Approximately 60 days after the nest is laid, the eggs will hatch. The turtles will actually spend about four or five days in the egg chamber, digging their way through all that sand. In the evening, typically when the sun goes down, the temperature drops. That indicates to them that it's nighttime and it's safe for them to come out. A chilly rain has also cooled the sand and helps to trigger a rare daytime hatching. And all of a sudden the babies emerge, typically all at once in what we call a boil. Safety in numbers, and then they'll head right down to the ocean. Here they come, see? Typically, on an undeveloped beach, the ocean is, is the brightest, most open horizon. You would have sand dunes behind you and vegetation. The problem arises when there's a lot of development or roads nearby, and you get lights on the beach, or you get lights behind the turtles. Oftentimes they'll turn and head the wrong direction and they'll perish either in the dunes or up on a roadway. So it's very important to keep lights turned off on the beach at night so that the hatchlings can make their way directly to the ocean and not waste energy walking all around looking for the light behind them. Now that's a great view right there. There they go! <laughs> the hatchlings need to make their own way to build up their strength. From here, they have a two-day swim ahead of them to reach the relative safety of the Sargasso Sea, a floating island of seaweed far out into the Atlantic at the edge of the Gulf Stream. Only about one in a thousand females will ever live the 20 or more years it takes to mature and then return to her beach to lay her own eggs. A statistic that puts the Conservancy's preservation efforts into rather stark perspective. How is something that tiny? Yeah, making the big ocean. Gosh, they've got it tough. But on this day, on this beach, the humans have done all they can do. Now it's up to Mother Nature as each of the turtles start their own adventure that is the cycle of birth and death and the saga of Baldhead Island's loggerhead turtles. <laughs>